what's up dudes uh, so I just want to check am I live now sorry this is this is the first time like really really now doing like a proper live video um, so I'm overlaying all that Sorry, just bear with me for a second. <laughs> I just want to check if I'm on here. If any of you guys can see me. Yeah, I'm on. Alright, dudes, so, yeah, let's let's get into it. Uh, well, well, first of all, uh, I'd like welcome all to my channel. Um, and, yeah, today we're just going to run over, like, a basic step-by-step um, -step guide of how so to edit your FPV videos um, and yeah what I like to use uh, is I like to use Adobe Premiere um, so first of all what you want to do is go ahead uh, go get yourself Adobe Premiere it's a really, really powerful engine to use uh, to edit your FPV videos <coughs> yeah I started editing this video last night um, and then I decided like hey uh, let's do this let's just do a live stream I see there's a lot of questions of guys um, asking, I'm just going to move this up here, uh, just give me a second, just get out this out of the way, um, there's a lot of guys asking, um, like, what programs do you use, and what export settings do you use, and, um, you know, all that, and today I'm going to go all, all over, well, all over everything, all the settings, export settings and stuff, it's pretty simple, um, it's pretty easy to understand, um, so yeah, uh, mini me FPV, what's up, dude? So yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me anything you want. Um, I've been flying and editing my videos uh, for about a year and a half now. So yeah, let's jump into it. Um, so first of all, what you're gonna do? Okay, like I said, download yourself Premiere Pro. It's a really, really powerful engine to use. You can do a lot of stuff. You can do real, a lot of cool stuff. So then yeah. We'll first get onto the screen. This is what I actually started editing last night, so I decided this year um, I'm going to do this. Right, so I just want to put on my sound so I can hear the music and stuff, yeah. Let's do this on a live stream, so cool. As first as you get it to the screen, uh, when you open up Premiere, uh, wait, let me just close it, let me start from the scratch. So yeah, what you're going to do is you're going to open up your Adobe Premiere, Look at that sexy frame in the back right there. That's, that's the frame I fly every day. Check out if you do. Really, really cool frame, strong frame. Still in proto phase, um, but yeah, soon to be released to public. All right, so there, here we go. Uh, then you go to create new project. So um, a lot of guys, they struggle, um, you know, just going from the CPU. So if you've got a, a really nice, um, graphics card and stuff, you can just select Mercury Playback Engine, GPU Accelerator, OpenCL. But I'm using the MSI uh, RX 570. It's a decent graphics card and it does its job. Uh, you're able to play full resolution playback in Adobe. Um, so that's what makes it really nice. It's got 16 gigs RAM um, and yeah, uh, i7 CPU. So yeah, that's basically like the basic standard you need to you know to edit your videos without stuff being all laggy and draggy and all that stuff and then capture format you're gonna go select you can select DVI right sweet okay photo of this okay but no 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 so first sorry I jumped a step right there so just name your project that you're working on so this China mall uh, flow whatever you name it whatever you want and just say okay so then you wait up for the screen uh, so you go over to assembly or editing uh, they're basically the same tab so what you want to do is uh, click right there import media to start and select control i 
then it's going to jump over to your you know the stuff you want to import so i've got an extra driver store all of my gopro footage on and this is how i sort all of my stuff so you can take note about that um this is how i store all my stuff and you know sort all my stuff so band oc and you would just like put folders in there uh, like session one or session two or whatever um, so yeah this was this was yesterday's um slide so if the, if you did like a couple of rips um and you're not sure well you got one specific video in mind and you didn't like capture the name or you know the file name whatever you just select both um, so what you can do then is um, you can go well then it will pop up here so you can just double click on that <laughs> As soon as you're dragging your clip the very first time um, on your timeline, it's going to ask you uh, to match the sequence settings. Then you just click yes, okay. Alright, so what you want to do is, so this is where I want to start. Uh, so I'm just going to, well, here's your, up here you will find your source, effect controls. We're going to get to that just now. Here's your auto clip mixer and then all your metadata. I just want to put this a little bit softer otherwise you're not going to get the speed so I'm just going to zero this out and um, yeah you can just like play through the clip and you can check wherever um, you want to start your clip from uh, I started editing this video yesterday um, so yeah I basically know where I want this clip to start at I'm just, I'm just going to play for it, so it's a bit back. So yeah, this is like a complete raw tutorial. Um, so just bear with me, I just need to find that spot where I, where I want to start editing the clip from. Uh, I think it's right here. I oh, know it's not here. It's not here. I think it's here. right after this here no it's not damn where the hell is that piece except if I've got the wrong clip now I think well, now man I've got the right clip <laughs> so I'm just looking for that part where I want to start my video at Oh yeah, 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 here it is. Um, so if you, yeah, this is quite cool. So if you want to like just roll back uh, the plate, you can just put your mouse on this uh, screen right here and you can select where you want to start um, your video. Or say if you want to do some like fine adjustments. So I'm gonna start right there, about there. So I'll cut out if it doesn't match what I'm doing. Um, so yeah. I'm jumping, I'm jumping, I'm, I'm in a hurry, it seems like I'm in a hurry, but I'm not. I'm here to teach you guys how to edit your APV rips, man. So if you want to cut, uh, you got shortcut keys, uh, make sure you, cl you clicked on your timeline. 
So you press the button C on your keyboards uh, to enable the cut option. So you can just cut your clip right there. You can just move that out of the way or you can just make sure it is selected. If you don't want to use it, you just press delete so it's out of your way completely. And then you can either right click, uh, you can say ripple delete, uh, but yeah, first thing um, I would recommend you guys doing, uh, wait, is my voice a bit soft so I should just turn it up a bit for you. Um, sorry, just give me a second, let me turn up my mic a little bit for you. Thanks, Hunter PV, what's up, dude? Uh, it looks like my, I don't know, it looks like it's turned up all the way. I'll just speak louder for you. <laughs> uh, so what you can do is you just click on that empty part right there, and then you can just press delete on your keyboard. All right, so that's the first thing you want to do. Uh, get your clip there, which you want to edit. So the next thing is like obviously you know well it's generally most of us guys we like to put some music uh, to our rip clips so what you do is you press control I so that takes you to your import again but make sure you clicked in this tab right here you press control I and it takes you to your import whatever whatever you want to import so I use this clip um, I'm going to show you how to get some music a really really simple way um, I'll, I'll go through that in a bit um, so just remind me for the guys that's been watching through the whole video uh, if I do forget but I won't forget okay then you take your music whatever well music you want to use to import so I chose this clip um, to put with my video is select open and switch you just drag that right in there so what you do is then after you've dragged it in so then you just click here and then you, what you can do is when you press enter uh, that's when it um, uh, or like renders like edited parts uh, but if, if you're using if you're using like OpenCL or whatever, um, rendering doesn't really happen. Uh, it's just like it's, it does its own job. It's, this is what I like about Adobe. Uh, we are found with um, DaVinci Resolve and stuff. You need to like render everything. It's just stupid. I don't know. I don't. I don't like Resolve. Um, got nothing against it. I've got a lot of friends using Resolve, but DaVinci Resolve um, and they love it. But yeah, I prefer Adobe Premiere. It's what I learned myself to edit videos and yeah that's what I prefer using so so whenever you uh, want to start from the beginning of a clip you can just like click on here and then you just print press enter and it will start so I'm gonna check um, so obviously what you want to do is you want to line up your music uh, you know to sync with the video obviously um, so so that's where this part comes this part here comes in handy so you know so you can so when you, if you look at, have a look at this bar right here um, on your timeline. So when you scroll, you just use a scroller uh, on your on your mouse. So when you scroll through, um, that bar moves as well. So if that's a part you want to cut right there, you can just select cut. And if you maybe cut something and you didn't want it, so you can just press Control Z and it will undo it. So let's press Enter and check. Well, hopefully I'm on the right place. Um, if I'm not, I'm going to show you how to do all those fine adjustments. All right, so so if you want to zoom, so now I'm going to do some fine adjustments. So if you want to zoom in on your timeline, you just press your left alt and you just use your scroll button on your mouse to get into, you know, to zoom in. Roll forward, you zoom in, roll back, you zoom out. So I'm sorry guys, I'm might stretching this video a bit, but you know, you get a lot of videos, the people they just like fly through everything, they don't literally explain every single step to you, and that's what I'm here for today. Because a lot of guys they watch these videos and they're left confused, like, oh, like what the hell? How did this guy get the setting and how does this guy do this? So I'm teaching all the shortcuts and stuff on the mouses and stuff as well. So and on the keyboards and yeah all right so that's where uh after dip dip right there so that's where i think i'm gonna start my clip right there 
so delete that again so let's check if it's syncing Spacebar to pause uh, and then just press C again to cut off a little piece right there. Delete that part. sync in the music video video uh, with your video you know that's all up to you how you want to do that uh, but I get sometimes I get very specific um, so you can just analyze your video you know if you think you got it on beats with the video just analyze it just look a little bit more forward in the video and you know just keep an eye on how the music is syncing with the actual video so um, I know from you know, I'm very picky. So yes, as last night I started editing this video, so I bailed out of the edit, and I thought to make this live stream with you guys. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I've analyzed my video, and I know exactly where the beat is syncing with the video. So I see it's not completely in sync. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna go a little bit back. So what you can do is when you get the spikes, you know, you can see like so if You can just press left alt and you go over to this part right here And you can just scroll up with your mouse button again. So that's where the first beat is going to hit So this is where I pop out from the balcony uh, So what I would do there is I would just move this clip just up a little bit You know, you'll see that goes uh, two milliseconds happening right there you know, just to get that rhythm, you know that whole rhythm into you know, it's like it makes it interesting to watch the video you know with the music syncing with the beat all right so we are done with that part. So to make it, so sometimes like when you cut off the beginning of a song, so what I would like, well, what I usually like to do, I was just like apply default transition. So the music starts fading in with the clip, right? Right, so now we've got that. Right, so as soon as you got that sorted then you move over to you know to your, like your color grading 
right? So this basically, this whole clip is done with. And you, what you saw there is like an auto save. Um, so that pops up, you know, every like five or 10 minutes, you can actually adjust that thing, um, you know, you know um, how, after how many minutes your project needs to auto save. Um, so I'm just gonna cut this right here and delete that part right here. Okay, so next what we wanna move over to is you know um, like color grading do not ever color grade on your your clip itself um, so what you do is you go over to this tab right here um, if you don't see it it's because this tab right here is too small so just go there just drag it out a little bit and you'll see the new item and what you want to do is put an adjustment layer right so if you well you will you'll see the setting right here so if you filmed at 30 frames per second, if you filmed at 60 frames per second, make sure your adjustment layer is set to the frames per second you were busy, well, you were using, uh, filming your whatever clip you filmed. Okay, so you, did, you, you just click OK. So then it will pop up here in your, you know, in this tab right here. So what you do is, you just take that over, you drag it into your timeline to the beginning, and you stretch it out all the way. All right, so you can select that snap in timeline. So what you'll see, it snaps to, you see there, you, you see that little black bar right there? It's cause it's snapped to the end of the clip. You just, so whenever you're away from the end of the clip, you see it's not gonna snap. Uh, so as soon as you get closer, now it's snapping to the audio, but you wanna snap it against your, you know, to the GoPro clip itself. All right, so then you, make sure you click on the adjustment layer and then you move over to your color tab right here now color grading is more of a personal preference some guys like to use this method some guys try to use well they like to use these methods and you know everybody's got their own way of color grading this stuff um, so you can either use LUTs um, I don't have any LUTs installed at the moment um, I completely rebuilt my computer it's fresh new windows installed so my computer is quite fresh. I haven't downloaded any LUTs. I lost some of my data because I actually, um, like I, I deleted the wrong petition. So I lost a lot of my GoPro footage. It sucks, but it's okay. You know, it's, I'm not going to quit FPV today. So I'm going to keep on flying probably for the rest of my life. So I don't even care if the FFA legal or it makes it illegal. So I'll be flying legal and I don't care if a crap about that. Right, sweet. So what I usually like to do, you get presets. So you go over to the creative tab right here, right? You're in the color tab. Uh, you've got your uh, adjustment layer enabled. So you go over to creative add, um, our creative tab. So what you can do is, you see, as soon as I click there, you know, you can just, there's like a lot of presets and you can just scroll through that and you can check what, you know, you can tick whatever works for you. And sweet, there you've been color graded. If you want to do some fine adjustments, you can go over to the basic correction tab and you can just like adjust your exposure right there or your contrast or whatever. Um, so if you want to set that back to default, you'll be just be double clicking right there. And yeah, never use auto because it sucks. Uh, but yeah, I think, well, this is the one I used yesterday and it looks pretty clean for me. Oh, well, clean to me. Uh, sorry, my English is not that good. I'm from Africa. I speak Afrikaans. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, Gold Rush, this is the one I like. Uh, I use, I kind of use it a lot of, well, on a lot of my videos. Um, so yeah. Now you can always go back. I see my, my audio is still a little bit out of sync. Uh, with the with the footage, but yeah, I'll I'll come back to that just now, um, and, and yeah, you can always just you know like fine tune all you want. You know, it's, it's your own clip, your own music you're putting with, so yeah, you can just do whatever you want with that. Um, so okay, and here's here's one trick. Um, one thing I like to do, it just makes it like your video just looks a little bit more immersive. Um, I see there's a lot of guys using this technique. And they're not showing it to the community, you know. It's because you know you, you you do your own clip, and it's like fuck. Look, this guy's video. It looks like so much more immersive, and you know, like everything just looks so much cooler. Um, you know, there's some motion blur and stuff. So 
uh, people don't generally understand how to get those type of things and you can just do it by like this is simple stupid thing uh, you can just add to your adjustment layer and I'm going to show you how to do that right now um, so what you want to do is um, you go over to this right here you can just scroll with your you know your scroller button on your on your mouse so to you get to effects and then you type in lens it's a it's not it's nothing you need to download it's it's in a dope premiere and what I like to do is I take GoPro session 4 uh, and I select 1080p well 1080 super view and I drag that into the adjustment layer right there and there you see so <coughs> Yeah, you can enable the stuff so you, uh, you know enable and disable uh, all your you know you can tr control all your effects you know basically from this panel right here so you can just scroll through all that there's your audio mixer and here's your effects control and stuff so yeah you select your adjustment layer uh, effects control and when you scroll down you see there the curvature I like to put it down to minus 10 you know so it's not you know because um, what it does it basically uh, you know it's like widens out the actual super view you already got uh, I film with a session 5 GoPro session 5 and but it's still scaled in a little bit too much so after setting it down to minus 10 you just go over to your scale so then you can okay I'm gonna show you this set it down to 90 right now you see there's like a border around that so go up to 95 so you play with that till it actually oh no 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 i'm adjusting on my adjustment layer right now sorry just leave that at 100 so sorry i don't mean to confuse you right now so after you dragged this into your adjustment layer this is where you'll get the lens distortion right in your effects panel so what you do is then you click over onto your gopro video itself you click at the scaling um, and then so what's going to happen all right say so, say so it's 90 so this is what that lens distortion actually does so while filming especially while uh, while flying cinematic stuff like mountains and stuff if you just leave it normally you'll get the mountains it makes like a bow effect so what the lens distortion does it picks up the mountains so it looks a little bit more you know it looks bigger and just for some reason it looks a little bit more um, you know immersive I, I can put it that way so what you want to do is just play with that you know get, take it up to 95 degrees so you'll see there's like a little black bar there so it disappears so I use 96 and there the black bar is where uh, it's, it's, it's still a bit more there so 96.5 cool <laughs> So you see what I what I did what I mean by you know it adds like a little bit of a motion blur, um, and you know it, it it just makes it looks a little bit more like warpy. It gives like this real steady effect, but it's not true real steady. Uh, but yeah, this is like a real steady cheat. <laughs> and yeah, it, it does make your videos look a lot smoother for some some reason. All right, so as soon as you're happy with this part right here, so your color grading your color grading has been done. Okay, so next what you want to do is obviously you want to add your logo. Say maybe you're sponsored or, you know, something like that. Or you would just like to add in whatever logo you feel like doing. Maybe like your, you know, your logo, your flight logo. Um, you know, your, like I'm Ruthless FPV. This is an image I made. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to drag that right into it. But I'm sponsored by G-Code FPV and Flying Robot and GMB. Um, and yeah, that's 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 the things I'm gonna be putting in there. All right. So then you select open. So then I'll throw you up out here again to this tab right here. So what you want to do is, okay. So what I like to do is make an intro. So I've got like a is like a three D well like a video type intro thingy. Of my flying robot sponsor and my um, you know my own logo so you open up that as well 
So what I like to start with is um, my own logo. So what you want to do, you want to put that on top of your adjustment layer right there. So I'm just going to pop over here to editing again. Um, so I like to start with my actual logo. So this is the intro. If you want this thing to be, well, this, this thingy right here, I just added there. If you want it to be transparent, you go over to effect controls. You select the clip you want to use. Yeah, if you want to make it transparent, you select color dodge. Alright, so you see what happens there now. Alright, sweet. So, yeah, we're going to drag up the flying robot. So, what you'll see, uh, the flying robot is much longer than the ruthless FPV intro. So, what you can do is, if you want to make your intro a little bit longer, you can just right click on whatever you want to, you know, stretch out. And you go to make sure this is enabled because if this is enabled as soon as you press OK, it will move up your, you know, the whole thing you did. And so it will throw everything out of alignment and you're going to have to do everything from scratch again. Well, or you can just undo it and, you know, just redrag it thing. So just make sure this is unticked. Uh, so I, th I can't remember. I think this is like 36% the speed. Cool. So if you want to zoom in and make sure... It is perfectly aligned with this. Now it's I'm gonna make it 36.8 right there. Cool. So it is it's basically in sync with each other. So just always remember you want to do your logos on top of your your adjustment layer. Don't put it down your you know below your adjustment layer because this is where your color graded is done and your lens distortion has done. Um, so. You know, while adding the transparent effect to these clips, it will make it all look mushy and stuff. And sometimes you'll get like some weird screen effects and stuff. So just make sure whatever logos you add, whatever intro video you add, whatever it may be is on top of the adjustment layer. All right, so you'll see because the flying robot logo is above the uh, the ruthless FPV logo, it would much well it would rather show this clip than the one below it. All right, so what you want to do then is delete the ripple just by selecting and pressing delete on your keyboard. So again, you click on that clip right there. You go to your effect controls in this tab right here. Uh, then you select color dodge again. Then, if you want to move this over, so you select on this clip, and you want to move this logo away from that logo, the ruthless FPV logo. So you double click on scale, right? So whichever one you want to move around on the screen or put it wherever you want, you just select it and you double click on scale, and this will lighten up. The border will lighten up around there, All right? So this is where we're going to put it at. I want to move this one up a little bit. Double click on scale and you can just move that up. So I'd like to make this just a little bit bigger. When it's faded, you can always select a linear dodge. So it will lighten it up a little bit. So I'm just going to move because this one's coming out of the frame. Scale, double click, pick it up. Make it a little bit smaller. Alrighty. Next is obviously want to incorporate your, you know, your actual logo, you know, like your, whatever your name is, um, or your logo looks like. Make sure you put that after, you know, video, video, um, video in intros or whatever. So what's going to happen? All right, so. Automatically, well, then, then you just switch over there. So what you do is you click on that again. You put scale. You can just move it to wherever you want it. I like to put mine down left in the corner. And you can just put that right there. You know, because obviously you want, you don't want, you know, like two of the same things in an intro. You know, there's that part there. So I like to put it 
right there and what you can do is you can put a like apply default transition so what it will do is as soon as this fades away this one will start fading up all right so if you don't like it you know fading too early all right so it's a little bit early so what you can do is you know you just you zoom in make sure you zoom in and you can just drag that one you can also drag it right there and you'll see that change right there so when I drag when I drag here that one goes bigger when I drag it here it goes smaller right there so now it's cross dissolving right here all right cool all right so next is what I want to do is I want to uh, put in my g-code FPV logo scroll to the very beginning of the clip and again to zoom in and zoom out and that's just holding your left alt and using the scroller button on your on your mouse okay so if you want to you know like zoom in you know to a specific part that's where you just keep your cursor and what you do is you keep on your left alt and it will zoom to that specific spot so I want I want to add another thing right there so you just put your cursor there hold in your left alt and use your mouse button while well, you're scrolling on your mouse so next I'm gonna add my g-code FPV logo so I'm gonna make that the same length well this is just a normal PNG all right so what I'm gonna do you can just double click again click there double click scale and you can just move it around to where we want it so I'm gonna put that right there and also i'm sponsored by jim b so okay well this is this is a proper um logo made up in adobe so it has no background the uh, backgrounds automatically um transferred so that's why i'm not going to use the blend mode you know to color dodge or whatever um so and then i'm going to add my gnb logo right there and you can just double click on that Bear in mind, if something is below what you want to move, you can't just double click it right there, you see. Otherwise, you can do it if there is a margin around it, you know, if it's not full screen. So as soon as something is full screen, you won't be able to click, double click this to quickly scale it down or move it around uh, because the other one is overla overlapping the other one. You know, that's just, just you know, everybody knows that, uh, well, I assume. <laughs> getting back to the fine tuning right here um, I'm still not happy with right so yeah I'm going to well, yeah, just keep an eye on my channel. I'll post this. Oh, well, after this, well, this is this is my edit, man. It's done. You know, check how quickly that can be done. Um, and what you want to do is, on the end of your clip, what you can do is you can select where it needs to end. Right there. So I want it to end right there. And what you do is click there. You use C to enable the cut tool you cut it right there you select well you pr after that after you click well press c on the keyboard you can press v to have your selector um done um opened and you can just select that clip and you just press delete and your keyboard ah uh, delete yeah on your keyboard and there you go so what i did right there is i right click apply default transition what you do want to do is uh Type C on your keyboard again to enable the cut tool. So, and it is delete that.
thinking up properly. Now, you saw my logo there disappear. It's because this is my logo. There it disappeared. So what you want to do is drag it all the way through. Make sure it is lined up. You don't want your adjustment layer to be before the transition. Make sure it is all the way down to the very end of the clip. And you can just cut your music, whatever wherever you want to cut it so if you want your music to start fading out towards the end you can just again right click apply default transition and you take your constant power say let's test this there you can hear the music it start fading what's up hunter pv yeah i'm i'll do that for you guys um like i said i'm going through the whole katuri from a to z um, so yeah, I'm going to put in my export settings, um, and yeah, I'm going to show you how to export that. Actually, one thing I did forget to show you guys before you started, before you start to do anything, um, you know, to make your computer run a bit more smoother, um, on a dope, because some, I know some guys' PCs, they struggle, um, to, you know, to run actual GoPro footage in a dope, GoPro, the, the, well, uh, what you call it, what you call it again, um, like the codec is a really tough one to beat, um, I've edited 4k clips from, you know, like from, from a Canon camera, and it just like plays smooth, this is 2.7k recorded, and it struggles to play, um, although I've got a pretty decent computer, um, I've got a i7 CPU, I've got a big graphics card, you know, I've got 16 gigs RAM, and still my GoPro footage, struggles to play in full resolution it will be laggy um, if your computer struggles um, this is one tip I can give you if your computer struggles you can try you know playing making the playback um, quality to half resolution or quarter resolution or full resolution if you've got, really got a beast PC um, and what you can do is well, this is when you're struggling to really really play um, you know GoPro footage and trying to edit in Adobe what you want to do is you go to file uh, no 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 sorry you go to edit and then you go all the way down to preferences you'll see another um, menu pop up here and then you go over to your memory right there so what you want to do is you'll see here uh, I've got 16 gigs RAM installed um, so yeah it picks up 16 gigs so one tip I can give you close your 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 chrome you like google chrome close it cause it chows data for some reason um, it's just something i saw on other guys tutorials on youtube um, so what you want to do is ram reserved for other applications so when you're editing your video gopro footage is tough to play in 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 any video editor it's just it's a tough tough codec to beat if you don't have like a beast pc to run it like ultimate smooth um, what you do is you want to take that all the way down to 3 gigs so the, the remaining RAM you have there is all dedicated to your Adobe you are using so you press OK and yeah so yeah guys I guess this is it this is, this is my video my, my video is done um, I don't need to change anything um, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of seconds. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, I think I'm just gonna give you like guys like a minute or so. I don't want to stretch this thing out. Um, you know, you don't want to watch like five hour video. <laughs> um, so feel free to ask any questions. Um, right after um, I gave you guys some chance to ask some questions. I'm going to export this clip, well, this clip, and I'm going to show you exactly what export settings I'm using. And it's really, really simple to do. Um, there's nothing special about it. And yeah, so yeah, let me guys, let me give you guys like about a minute. Feel free to ask any questions. And yeah, we'll head over to export settings, and we are done for the day. Uh, and you guys can. Well, this has been doing live. Um, so if you know after the live video, you have watched through the video, and you you know you feel like there's something I can touch on, um, I'll do another live stream. If you guys are struggling with something, um, I'll do another topic live video. You know, just around that topic, and yeah, hopefully I can just help you guys.
out. And yeah. This is like I said, it's really simple. Um, in the beginning, it's going to be like, it's going to feel like rocket science, but it's not. Like after you've done your first video, especially using this technique I showed you, it's really plain, simple, plain, plain forward to do. There's nothing special about it. This is the technique I use in all of my videos. You can watch um, all of my videos in my playlist or whatever. Um, this is this is how I edit like literally every single video I do. It's not like there's thousands, things, thousands of things that's going on. And yeah. All right, so I'll give you guys a minute. Um, Byron, what's up, dude? How you doing, man? Zaka. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna move over to export settings. So what you wanna do is, you click on this tab right here. Well, this is your timeline. And I'm used to using the shortcut, so you're gonna press Alt and M. M for mother. Your mother. <laughs> um, and that, Control M, and that will take you over to your export settings right there. So what you can, you know, you got a choice, um, you know, match sequence settings. I just, for some reason I enable and disable that again. And what you want to do is on your format, you go down to H264. You know, just don't use Blu ray or anything else. This is what you want to use H264. Uh, and then you go to preset. And there's a lot of guys like Joshua Bardwell, uh, even Snake FPV. I basically learned editing from Snake FPV's tutorial video. Um, but yeah, I did include everything, like literally everything, you know, all the shortcuts and all that stuff. Um, so it's just like flipping all over the place, but it's a cool video. You guys should actually go and check out him and JB's video. Uh, it's really, really helpful. And yeah, so what you want to do is uh, you go over to preset. Now uh, what I use is, okay, so I've got five, 5G at home, so I've got really, really fast internet. So um, like about a month ago, I only got st got the internet. So what I usually did use is YouTube 1080p full edition. So this whole clip right here, this this whole everything, like there's your timeline, there's your sequence, this is your sequence, the stuff right back there, this stuff you edited, that's your whole sequence. So always select sequence in and out. That's what you want to do. Select sequence in and out. Make sure that is selected. So. YouTube 1080p, you will see, this is this is estimated file size, but that's what you do if you don't have like, you know, like a lot of data, you maybe on a data plan on your mobile or something, and you're posting your video from your phone, you know, it's, that's what I used to do, I put my video, after I finish exporting it, I put it on a memory card, I put the memory card on my phone, and that's how I would, uh, um, you know, post my video up to YouTube. But now, since if you uh, use it with, you know, like with fast internet, this is, this is what I use now. I upscale it to 4K. Although this is recorded in 2.7K, this upscales it to 4K, which makes it less like your footage so much crisper. Even when viewing in like 720p or 480p, it just looks a lot clearer. But instantly you saw, so it jumped up from 200 and something megabytes up to 654 megabytes all right so what you also want to do after you've selected this this and this right here what i do is use maximum render quality always make sure that is selected right there all right so disable this remember if you uh, recorded in 60 frames per second you want to click 60. all right okay well if you did record in 30 frames per second, you know, it's not going to allow you to select, uh, select 60 frames per second. So I recorded in 30 frames per second, so I'm selecting 30 frames per second. Listen up, dudes. This is, this is really a crucial part of having your video posted to whatever platform and it comes out crystal clear. Just remember, um, as soon as you start customizing this stuff right down there, Look, you selected the 4K Ultra Edition, but that's going to go to custom. After you started, you know, after you start changing stuff, right? You know, down here. Um, this is helpful video, man. Thanks, bro. I'm just trying to help out people. I, so I see there's a lot of 
aren't, you know, like questions and people are struggling their asses off to get this shit right. And it's really simple. Um, okay, so after you just remember this, your output is going to remember it's going to remember 4K. So use maximum render quality. They already went over to custom. Make sure, don't worry, it stays on 4K or 1080p or whatever you selected up there. Just make sure this is, that's what you used. I filmed in 30 frames per second. So yeah, select 30 frames per second. Render at maximum depth. Yeah. Encoding settings, high. Level, 5.1. Because if you go above that, you know, I don't know. Because after you post a video to Facebook, like, Facebook completely tears apart your videos. So if you want to specifically post to Facebook, you use Facebook. Uh, where's it now? Where's it? Am I going past it? Yeah, Facebook Ultra 4K. All right. So if you specifically want posting a YouTube uh, 4K um, to Facebook, it's going to be a disaster. You know, take note. It's not going to work. Believe me, I've tried it your audio is late with the video and everything just goes out of sequence because I don't know Facebook's got a really crappy way of encoding videos it just like completely tears off your whole video I use uh, well I like to use VVR Pass 2 and yeah that's it bro and then as soon as all this stuff has been done and you've done exactly what I told you to do you just wait export and yeah it's gonna start exporting and yeah, then you're just going to have to wait. And yeah, dudes, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the tutorial. Um, if you guys feel like I left out on something, if you guys feel there's any answers, feel free to ask me down in the comment section. Um, subscribe. Let me know whatever you want I can help you with. I'm more than happy to help you guys with anything. Um, and yeah, this is it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And yeah. See you guys on the next one. Peace.